Let's look at an introduction to inference procedures for two proportions. We'll work through the sampling distribution of the difference in sample proportions and look at formulas for the confidence intervals and hypothesis tests, but we'll actually work through the example in another video. Here's the example we're going to work with. The study investigated various aspects of drug use among pregnant women, and one of the variables that was measured was whether the mother used marijuana in her pregnancy, and then whether the baby had a low birth weight. So over here, we have a sample of women who used marijuana during their pregnancy, and we have it broken down here between the total babies, 822 in the sample, and 90 of those babies had a low birth weight. And so our sample proportion in that proportion was 90 over 822, which is equal to at least a three decimal places to 0 0.109. And over here, these were women that did not use marijuana during their pregnancy. And that is our second sample. And we're going to say P2 hat is equal to 512 over 6648. And that rounded to three decimal places is 0 0.077. And our difference in sample proportions, P1 hat minus P2 hat, is going to estimate estimates the difference in population proportions P1 minus P2. So this difference in our two statistics is going to estimate this difference in our two parameters. And some points of interest for us, constructing a confidence interval for the difference in the population proportions, as well as testing the null hypothesis that the difference in proportions is equal to zero, or equivalently, that the null hypothesis is that the two population proportions are actually equal. A very common test that we want to carry out. To actually carry out that test, we need to know something about the sampling distribution of the difference in the sample proportions, because this is going to estimate the true difference in the population proportions. And the sampling distribution of the difference in sample proportions actually has a mean of, well, P1 minus P2. So the difference in the sample proportions is an unbiased estimator of the difference in the population proportions. Its variance is this thing. So the sampling distribution of P1 hat minus P2 hat has a variance of this. Now this part is my variance of P1 hat, and this part is my variance of P2 hat. And if they are independent samples, we can simply add those two together. We take the square root of our variance formula and we get our standard deviation. So this is our standard deviation of the difference in sample proportions. And also for large sample sizes, the difference in sample proportions is approximately normally distributed. So we're going to be able to use our regular techniques. If I want a confidence interval for this difference in population proportions, I'm going to start off with my best guess of the difference in population proportions, which is my difference in sample proportions. And then I'm going to add and subtract the margin of error. And for proportions, that's going to involve a z value, z sub alpha over 2, using the notation that we've used before, z sub alpha over 2, times the standard error of the difference in the sample proportions. Very similar logic to things we've seen in the past. And here's the confidence interval written a little bit more nicely, in case you can't decipher my handwriting in that last slide. And our problem here is going to be getting the standard error. That's the messiest thing to calculate. Now this down here is our true standard deviation of the difference in the sample proportions. And ideally, I would like to use this in the formula, but I don't know P1 and I don't know P2. Those are unknown population parameters. And so I simply replace those parameter values with uh, the sample values, and I call that my standard error. So this is my standard error of the difference in sample proportions, and that's what's going to go up into our formula. Another common point of interest is testing the null hypothesis that the difference in population proportions is zero, or equivalently, that the population proportions are equal. And to do this, we're going to go through and use a normal Z test. If we have large sample sizes, then we can rely on the normal approximation to go ahead and do this. So this is going to be a, a Z, and this is going to be the difference in the sample proportions minus the hypothesized value, well, that's just zero, so I, I can forget about all of that. So it's just the difference in the sample proportions, and this is going to be our standard 
error of the difference in sample proportions, but under the null hypothesis. So more on this in a second, but we're going to just simply divide by our standard error of the difference in sample proportions, which should look very similar to things we've done in the past. So written out a little bit more nicely here, uh, in case you can't decipher my handwriting that last slide, we have our difference in our sample proportions divided by the standard error. Now this is going to be a little bit different than for the confidence interval, and that's why I have this subscript here representing the standard error under the null hypothesis. We ran into this type of thing in one sample problems, and we have the same logic here in two sample problems. So here is our true standard deviation of the difference in sample proportions. And ideally, I would like to put this in the denominator. But I don't know P1 and I don't know P2, which was the same situation as for confidence intervals. In confidence intervals, I put in the sample proportions. And it wouldn't be a really dumb thing to do here. That would be a logical type of thing to, to think through. But that's not quite how we do it. The standard error for the hypothesis test is going to be a little bit different here than for confidence intervals. And the logic similar to the one sample problems, comes from the fact that our null hypothesis is that our population proportions are equal. And what we do in the world of statistics is we create a test statistic that has a known distribution if the null hypothesis is true. And if this null hypothesis is true, the two population proportions are equal. And then the sample proportions are estimating the same quantity, and so we should just pool the sample proportions together when we do this. And so we use a pooled variation for our standard error. So here's the actual formula in the better end. We have our standard error that goes into our denominator of our test statistic up there is the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2, and the p hat is the pooled sample proportion. Ignoring the fact that we have two groups and just lumping everybody together and seeing the proportion in our entire two samples together. But a couple of points to note, there are some alternative approaches to the ones used here. And there are little tweaks that improve that normal approximation, little things we can do to improve things a touch. Some very different tests, uh, depending on the sampling design, etc. And another thing we often look at is instead of the difference we looked at here was the difference in population proportions, but sometimes that's not really the quantity of interest. Sometimes this quantity called the relative risk, the ratio of those two proportions is the most important thing. So that is a common thing done in statistics as well. But here we're looking at the difference, and we'll carry out this example in another video.